Well, good morning, everyone. Pastor Corey Rowland here with the Yorksville First Midvale and Newport United Methodist Church, bringing you a devotional today out of the book of Isaiah and Isaiah 9, verse 2, starting with an important question, and that is, where would we be without Jesus? What if Jesus never came into the world? What if he just decided to stay up and remain in heaven, not come down and take the cross for us because he decided it was too much hassle or we were too much trouble? First off, could any of us really blame him? I mean, if you think about it, what does God get out of the relationship that he has with us? Yes, you might say, well, he gets our worship and our love, but is that love unconditional or is that worship passionate? Oftentimes it is lukewarm and oftentimes our love is built on the condition that God agrees with us or that God does what we want him to do. And the moment that God gives us something uncomfortable, the moment that God does something we don't agree with, for many, unfortunately, they turn on him and they say, that's not my God, I serve this God who, who agrees with everything I agree with. So where would we be without Jesus? And it says in Isaiah 9 verse 2, the people who walk in darkness have seen a great light that they dwell in the land of the shadows of death upon them hath that light shine you see before jesus came into this world we were walking in darkness surrounded by darkness consumed by darkness the bible says that we were stumbling because we could not see where we were going and into that darkness there came a great light as john says the, that jesus came into the world he created he stepped out of the glory of heaven, this great brightness. And one of the most common ways to describe God and to describe heaven is as a bright light. So he stepped out of this glorious brilliance, stepped down into the deep darkness of this world where you and I were surrounded and all consumed by darkness. And it says into that darkness, he brought us a great light that he could show us the way forward. We who were dwelling in the valley of the shadow of death, as it says, we who were dwelling in the deep darkness of of death he came to us and showed us a great light the great light is the glory of god the glory of god as he was hanging on the cross pleading father forgive them for they don't know what they do the great one who was hanging on the cross dying for our sins jesus said because he's humbled himself before god that god will glorify him and this light of the world as the bible calls him is sitting at the right hand of god the father in heaven calling us all into a relationship with him calling us out of the darkness of our sin and into a relationship with him but this relationship can only be found by those who are humble, those who are willing to say, yes, we don't have all the answers, or yes, we have sinned, we have done wrong. Those who are willing to submit their wants and desires for God's wants and desires. Those who are willing to get down on one knee and say, Lord, or get down on their knees and say, Lord, forgive me for I have sinned. If sin is darkness and Jesus is light then that means that Jesus and sin cannot exist together. In fact, the word, the Hebrew word that is used in the, I'm sorry, the Greek word that is used to describe Jesus as the light has a, uh, was one of the, one of the words in Greek that has an exact opposite word. And that exact opposite word means utter darkness, which is the same word used to describe sin. And so it says that Jesus is the exact opposite of sin. His light is the exact opposite of the darkness of sin. So if they cannot exist together, then you have to make a choice. Would you rather live in darkness or live in the light that is Jesus? And I pray for your sake that you choose to live in the light that is Jesus. Amen.